what we're going to be looking at today is I've kind of broken it down into five parts, this workshop. Um, hopefully it'll take about an hour. Um, and uh, yeah, if not, we'll just switch it all off. <laughs> That's if you don't do too much talking this week. I know, I'm gonna sh- it's, it's her fault, actually. You could talk for England. Uh, so we're going we're to be looking at, uh, part one is going to be transcribing bass parts. Um, so I'm not going to like go like really heavy duty into the process because I've already made a video that goes into that process. Uh, but I will be touching on it and I'll, I'll be talking about the way I do it, etc. Uh, and after part one, uh, we'll open it up for questions, um, a little Q&A there. And then part two is I'm going to talk about recognising patterns uh, and shapes in the piece of music that you're learning, right? Um, so these, these are kind of ways like sort of um, signposts in the music, if you like, that, uh, that can really help you learn pieces faster. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm well aware there's probably folks out there, some of you uh, players that you know, already do this really well, perhaps. You know, so, um, so when we open it up for the Q&A, it's not really a Q&A, it's a discussion. So if you've got anything to share, um, just type away and Jan will, will, um, will relay it, and that might be helpful for the rest of the group. Uh, by the way, do make use of the Super Chat, which is at the bottom if you're on YouTube. A bit difficult if you're not, but if you're watching on YouTube um, and it's the best platform to watch on, then there's a little dollar sign thing at the bottom. And I don't know how busy this is going to be. And because I'm only opening it up for questions at certain points, if you really want your question to stand out or your comment, if you just super chat it, like, you know, just put a small amount of of money on it, um, then it really highlights it. And then when we go to the Q&A bits, Jan can kind of scroll through and it, it really blasts out. You know? Yeah, they stay really highlighted. You, you exactly, know, really you know, so, so do make use of that. Um, plus, it's kind of cool. Um, so, so that's part two. Part three is going to be how to make it stick. So what I mean by that is, you know, once you've worked everything out and, 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 you've, and you've got all that, you know, how do you make it stick? How do you be able to come to the piece tomorrow and be able to play it and then forever and ever? Amen. Um, so we're going to look at that as well. Uh, part four is going to be, and I've got it wrong actually here, part four. Part four is going to be, I'm going to real time, if there's time, I'm going to real time learn a song as fast as I can. So I'm really going to blast through all the stuff that we talk about and see if we can kind of put it into practice to some degree. Um, time dependent. Okay, and then the very last part of the thing will be like a full-on party Q&A. So we'll just, um, we'll just talk bass nonsense or music nonsense or whatever nonsense you like for a little bit so uh, i've got like one minute left that i'm going to leave it before um i start the video properly any more in the house yet janet yeah we've got uh let's check we've got brian baker uh, becca sorry from calgary in canada oh wow yeah uh we've got this is one. Mark Richardson. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. <laughs> I think he, he thought we were ignoring him because <laughs> he answered himself. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Doing well, thanks. No, we we do care, Mark. Honestly. We do. Um, so good evening, Mark. Good and evening. we've got Sean P. Bass. How you doing, Sean? Uh, Pat, Pat says Facebook couldn't handle his epicness on the last stream. <laughs> so was it your fault that it, it just suddenly <laughs> dropped? That's what it was. I'm sure of it. Um, yeah. So there you go. Uh, oh, hang on. Have we got? We've got Pixel Motion. Hello from San Francisco. Wow. How cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. He's a, a regular in these parts. In these like YouTube parts. Uh, right, okay. So that, I, I, you know, what am I like? I could hear this beeping going off and thinking, what's that? <laughs> it's my timer. Okay, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to set myself a little, uh, little timer for this part one. Ten minutes as if. You're right. going to find that hard, Scott. I am going to find that very hard. <laughs> okay, let's put that down there. Okay, for anybody that's just joined the stream and just as a reminder for everybody else that's been here since the get go, today, um, today's workshop or this is a live bass workshop about learning songs on bass. Uh, And I'm going to talk about the way that I learn songs, and I'm going to suggest ways that you might learn songs or or might improve your song learning. Um, I'm also going going to be opening it up so that if you've got any suggestions, if you're already really good at this or you have different methods, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, Janet Whitley's in the house. Hi. She's going to take your questions. Uh, so I'm going to break this, like I said a minute ago, into five parts. We're going to do um, transcribing bass parts. So we're going to quickly look at how I uh, work out bass parts. Um, so if I'm learning a song, how I kind of work it out from the original track. 
Uh, part two is going to be recognizing patterns and shapes within the piece. I'll talk about that in a minute, obviously. Uh, then we've got part three, which is how to make it stick. So that's how to apply all this stuff and then really be able to remember that bass line so that when you pick the bass up tomorrow or if you're gigging, you know, you remember the bass part, okay? And then part four, I'm going to, if time allows, quickly try and put all this stuff into practice and see if I can demonstrate how I actually do it for real. You know, um, I'm going to actually try and work a, a bass part out that I don't know. And then part five, we're just going to uh, have a full-on Q&A, full-on party, discussion really, so anybody can throw any ideas into the part or if you've got any questions, etc. I should just say that um, before I really get into it, <coughs> excuse me, because I'm going to be opening it up only at certain points for questions, um, it, you know, Janet's going to have a hard time tracking the, uh, the comments, so she's going to try her best. But what I would say is, if you really want your question to get noticed, use the, uh, if you're on YouTube, which is the best place to, uh, to check it out, by the way, um, there's a little thing, little dollar sign called Super Chat. And if you click on that, it highlights your, your, your comment and she can't miss it. Bless him. Paul Taylor's just uh, done the Super Chat. He says, just to set the ball rolling and in appreciation of all your inspiration. Thanks ever so much. And we've got Walter Mitty has joined us as well. Hi, How you Walter. Doing? How you doing? Hope you're enjoying the CD, Walter, by the way. <clears throat> I'm sorry, this is making me chuckle. All right. I'm just looking on YouTube and the phantom thumbs down person, is, you know, the one thumbs down. Oh, no. <laughs> I'd love to find mm. out who it is. I love him. Right, okay, <laughs> let's get into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Transcrib transcribing bass parts, part one. So, um, so, first of all, a question comes up a lot. Should you bother transcribing bass parts yourself by ear? Or should you just get the, the notation or the um, or the tab for it? Well, that is a notation, or standard notation or tab. For me personally, and this is, it is a personal choice, you know, you can do it whatever way you, you, you want. But for me personally, I've only ever in, in my entire life um, sort of used tab or notation to learn a bass line maybe once or twice. Um, one of the times was I was um, trying to get into Victor Wooten's technique. If you've not heard of Victor Wooten, he's that, you know, crazy dude. I've not played anything yet, have I? Is this way even working? You know, he does all that. All that kind of mad stuff, right? Um, and I was like, how is he doing that? So I bought his book. And I bought the book because he'd transcribed it himself. So I knew it, it was going to be the technique that he was using. And I only really just needed to know what he was doing so that was one time and the other time actually there were maybe two or three of these actually was when i was learning uh like chicken picking guitar you know like um where you use a thumb pick and, and your two fingers and it's just so mechanical you know there's so much mechanics going on there and i just couldn't kind of hear it i couldn't understand um so i needed it to find out what the fingering was but other than that i've always worked out bass lines by ear and what that allows me to do um, is it frees me up to enjoy playing the piece for a start, right? So I'm not the kind of musician, like I said, it's very personal. I'm not preaching about this. This is just the way I do things. I like to be able to stand on stage and entertain and enjoy, you know? So, you know, if, if we're playing like a, you know, rock and roll thing. You know? notes and everything you know i want to be able to kind of look out engage with the audience move around you know feel free to kind of close my eyes and and get really into it you know and things like that so that's what when you work parts out yourself you really really learn the, the part uh it, on, a, on a much deeper level and then you have like a real command over it now having said that you know if you're a great reader um and that does it for you. You know, like some people don't like that thing I just talked about. Some people would prefer to be kind of more in the background, just doing the job, you know, well, you know, um, and stuff like that. So really, you know, I'm getting into kind of reading or whatever, but for me, working it out, I know it's going to be right. And in the process of working it out, I'm kind of learning the song as I go. So, so that's what I would say. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, if you've never done this before, I'm just looking at the time here. If you've never done this before, then um, you might need tab. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? You know, if you've got, I don't know, if you've got like a full-time job 
and you know you, you you play for fun and you just which is the best reason to play by the way and you're just enjoying it you might not have the time to spend you know getting really good at uh, learning songs by ear it's always worth working at it but you know don't feel like a I don't know, failure if you can't, you know, like everybody's on, only got so much time. So I hope I'm not waffling here, but yeah, that's my take on that. So I'm going to show you what I do in a, in a minute. Now, the first thing that you can do, by the way, if you're going to um, work out the baseline by yourself, or if you use tab or notation, um, just one sec, I'm, <laughs> I've got some mad Skype stuff going on here. Uh, <laughs> Oh, good grief. I thought I was cracking up. Yeah, yeah, let me, let me close that. Right, one sec. That's a northern thing, I think. <laughs> cracking up. It might carry on. <laughs> anyway, right, where was I? Yeah. It's to learn the bass part like a tune. Right. <laughs> oh, dear. Let me just, uh, <laughs> I can't believe this. It's very funny. Tell some jokes, Jan, will you? Uh, Hang on a minute. Oh, I'm rubbish. Hi, Hamish Kirkpatrick. <laughs> I can't. Uh, can't make it go away. Who else have we got? We'll just put up with it. I don't mind at all. All there right. You go. Here we go. Back in the room. So, yeah. So, let me let me try and give you an example, right? Um, a, a really obvious bass line. It's, it's almost more of a riff than a bass line. Would be something like um, <sighs> Ghostbusters, right? Um, <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Uh, Right, so I would guess that most people, if you sort of said, like, try and sing Ghostbusters and not the melody, they'd probably actually have a go at singing bum, 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 bum. You know, they'd probably have a go at singing that as if it was, like, the main, the main tune, right? So that's a really important part of, of for me, learning bass lines, is as soon as you can, I'm going to have to speed up here, as soon as you can... You know, even if you've used a tab, you know, you've sat there working it out, as soon as you've kind of worked a bit of it out, sing along as you play. You know, get to learn to sing the, the bass line. Um, and that way, right, you can just play the song in the car without your bass or anything and sing the bass part along. So you're learning it on a different level when you do that, right? You're not learning the fingering, although you can do it. You can visualize it in your head. But, yeah, sing the bass line. Okay, let me speed up here. Another thing I recommend uh, using it's too much to go into in this lesson is a thing called the diatonic chord system or the Nashville numbering system, right? Like I say, I'm going to do more on that in the future, excuse me. But instead of learning notes, right, if you, get your ma if you know a major scale, which is a good idea if you don't, so let me play one in the key of G. Oh, wait a minute. Like this. right you could think of that as notes you could be like g a b c but i never do that right i always think of the major scale uh in terms of intervals so i, I number it one two three four five six seven eight and this is like super super com common like lots of musicians do this so when i'm learning a bass part let's say these are the notes let's say it's g e c and d right so this is the bass line I think of it as numbers of the major scale. One, six, four, and five. Okay? And the cool thing about that is that once you get into that way of thinking with every part that you learn, if you need to change a key, you can just play it in any key, like one, six, four, five, you know, one, six, four, five, anywhere, all right? So, like I say, I, I can't really go into detail about that, but look it up, start to get into it, the Nashville numbering system or the diatonic chord system, um, or book a Skype lesson and we'll go through it in person. Uh, okay, let's move on. That was a shameless plug. So, the next thing is when you're working bass lines out, right, is should you, or when you're learning songs, because this is more than bass lines, this is songs as well, should you learn the bass line note for note or should you kind of put your own stamp on it, right? Now, this is something I'm really, really big on, this idea of actually putting your own stamp on things. And there are certain bass lines, like Ghostbusters, right, that I just pointed out there, or like, uh, you know... 
you know, things like that. Day Tripper, you know, stuff where you have to play the exact line, right? But then you've got kind of like, you know, rock and roll, um, country tunes, rock things, stuff like that, where it's more like a vibe kind of thing, you know? So, like, the let's say the chords are like um, A, C, and D. And it's a rock thing. Let me get a rock rhythm going here. So just this is just overview stuff, by the way. A, C, D. A, C, D. See what I did there? Two, three, four. A, C, D. Now, if you, if you like learning a song that has that kind of feel about it, right, there's no need to, in my opinion, kind of sit and work every single note of the thing out, right? Just the parts that sound really obviously like arranged, okay? So between that, you can you can kind of just go, you can just make more look at the chords, you know, it's A, C, and D, and then just play that feel over those notes. So that way, instead of having to remember every single move of the piece, right, all you need to think is um, you're playing uh, A, C, D, or one, I would think flat three, four, don't worry about that if you don't understand that. You know, and then you can, you just, basically applying a groove over those notes. Hope that makes sense. More on that in a minute. Uh, if you are working tunes out by yourself, um, then you need some the right tools for the job, right? Um, and without some of these things, it would be really hard. For me, it would anyway, I've got to be honest. The first thing is uh, I always use either headphones or in-ears, really good ones that, that you know produce a lot of low end, or some proper full range speakers like studio monitors or like floor standing hi-fi speakers something like that you know <clears throat> excuse me a little even though it might sound great you know like a little bose um you know bluetooth speaker or something like that yes you can use that but it's not going to be ideal there's no real separation so the easiest way is just some good earphones even some like half decent earphones you know um are going to be the best thing honestly a lot of people come to me like trying to work bass lines out. They say they can't do it. And that's half the trouble is they can't hear the bass. I wouldn't be able to hear the bass line on the stuff that they're using. Okay. So that's a really important one. The other thing about earphones is, by the way, they remove all the acoustics of the room, you know? So if you're in a room that's a bit echoey or whatever, that's going to make it really hard to pick out bass parts. All right. So top tip there, headphones, if you're trying to work out stuff yourself, a little program that I use called Transcribe. I've talked about this loads in videos, and there's a link to this program in um, in the description below the video. Let me see if I can bring it up. There's my notes you can see there, which wasn't supposed to happen, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is a program called Transcribe, right? It, there's a free um, trial of it, I think, for a month. Uh, like I say, the link's in the description below the video. And that's... This, you know, that's my like go-to thing for working out uh, songs. Um, if you don't have a laptop, you, you got to run it on um, a laptop or a PC. Um, if you haven't, there's um, a thing that somebody called Anthony Greatbanks recommended to us last week called Ultimate Guitar Pro app for Android and Apple devices. And again, I've put links for that in the description below. I've never actually used it, but I assume it does the same thing from what he was saying. You know, you can put songs in there, slow them down. Um, you know, that's that's the deal with these things. You can slow songs down. I'm going to show you exactly how that works in just a minute. And finally, just on transcribing, on, on these kind of bullet points, transcribing songs, should you write your transcriptions down, right? Um, in other words, should you, if you've worked the song out, should you score it out? or tab it out, whichever is your preferred method. Again, it's up to you. You know, if you want to use that on stage and you're happy to do that, then, then fine. But for me, my take on this on, on it is this. No, right? Because you have to learn the song if you don't write it down. You have to because, you're, you know, your, your memory is the only reference. So I'd really, really recommend um, having a go at doing that. You know, and even if you're using tab and things like that, and I've talked about this in previous, les previous lessons, Try and get it into your memory as quickly as you can. Um, I'll show you exactly how to do that in a minute. Right, so before we move on, uh, have we got any questions come in yet, Jam? Uh, yeah, we have. Let me just go through, because Paul and Anthony kindly um, did a super chat, but there's no questions at the moment Thank from you guys. them. 
Uh, so if you two want to ask a question at all, then just drop it in the chat. Thank you very much, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Walter Mitty's just sort of saying, love your CD. He's got it, obviously. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Lee said, about <laughs> getting kicked off last week, Facebook. <laughs> it's John Taylor from Duran Duran. Oh, it could be the thumbs down. <laughs> He's could jealous of the sheer Oh, I awesomeness. see, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, right, we do have a question, actually. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Mark Richardson's actually says... He always looks at the chords. He plays, uh, and then he right. plays around with them. Never uses tab. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the thing I was talking about, right? Yeah. Um, Kevon is here. How you doing, man? Uh, why do some bass players close their eyes when they play live? Is that something to do with the feel for playing, or a kind of groove thing? Uh, sometimes it's because they've been up too late the night before. <laughs> but I do it a lot, uh, and it is a groove thing. And that's what I was talking about. It's kind of if you learn a piece, it's just personally it's what i feel anyway like if i think of all the bass players that i really enjoy watching you know like um i don't know but you know all of them to be honest entwistle wooten jacko whoever it is you know actually jacko did look at the net quite a bit because it was very you know he's playing fretless but anyway for me um i kind of play the music from like in, in here and in here and i want to kind of not really be looking here it's you know I'm not going to call it like a spiritual thing, but it's just like a feel thing. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, Mark Richardson says own stamp all the time. That's what he believes. Yep. Um, Lee's asking, can ghost notes be used to add the groove you talked about? Completely, completely. Um, you know, we'll, we'll probably look at that. I mean, just, yeah, I use a lot of kind of ghost notes. Uh, too much maybe sometimes, I don't know. But like, if it was, even if I'm playing something simple like a... Like a, I was doing it by accident there. You know, I use those a lot. Um, but obviously that... Um, I should do a lesson just on that, actually. On the ghost note? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Pat Delaney, um, obviously you were talking about uh, uh, Transcribe yeah. and the app that Anthony was talking about. <coughs> Pat says he loads MP3s into GarageBand. Okay. He can slow down and alter the key from in there, and it's all free. So that's another one that people Fantastic. Could use. Fantastic. Yeah. It's uh, the same deal. Yeah. Yeah. Duke has joined us. Duke of Bokma. How are you doing? Uh, and we've got Ray Boyle. Good evening, Scott and Jan. How are you doing? Uh, Mark B says hello, Scott. How are you doing? Gav Patterson. Mark, is, here. is that Mark B? Yeah. Mark B, by the <laughs> way, I don't know if you want it or not, but I've got this for you. You won. Oh, you can't see it, can you? Oh, there, there, that camera. Look, ca I've got a crew of cameramen here, by the way. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Nice one. Uh, yeah, so just drop me an email on scott at scott-whitley.com and I'll send it to you. Right, let's get got, on with the show. Okay. Gav Patterson here as well. How you doing, Gav? Hey. Nice to see you. Very nice to see you. Right, okay. Part two, folks. We're going to be looking at recognising patterns and shapes in the piece. Like I say, I'm going to give you a practical demo of this. There's going to be a lot of talking. Hope that's cool with you. Um, Not like you. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> recognising patterns and shapes in the piece. So what I mean by that is there are many ways, right, you can spot patterns in the fingerboard. Um, and I don't mean like this. I mean patterns in the music, right? Uh, it's been a long day. You can spot patterns in the harmony of the music, right? Uh, in the song structure, for example, there might be, you know, you might learn a verse. This is how you hope it goes when you're learning a song. You learn a verse and then you go to the next verse and it's like, it's the same, you know. So sometimes you can learn one piece and then it repeats. So you look for that. Um, you look for um, kind of like cues and signposts in the music, right? Really interesting. Um, when we got back together with Big Country after that long break to do that live streamed gig we did, um, it was really funny. We were talking to Marg. And if you just kind of sit there and think about the songs, you know, we sat there going, um, God, it's been a while, hasn't it? How, you know, like Mark's going, how many times around do we do, you know? And you, when you think about it, you, you, you like can't remember. But when you start playing it, there are all these kind of musical signposts along the way, like there's, you know, like Bruce does that or Simon sings this or, you know, and, and it, you just totally remember it. So that's when I'm talking about musical cues. Um, they can be something the drummer plays <laughs> or the vocal or, or whatever, right? Okay, so um, 
let's just kind of talk about that for a little minute. Um, a little minute. What's that, Jan? A tiny little minute. A little minute. There we go. <laughs> okay. A minute or two. Micro. So I'm just going to use some examples, right? Um, if you were playing... So, so for example, say you're playing a, a, a rocky thing. Uh, and it is like that. It's kind of like, you know, I don't know, uh, like F. Like, let's say it's A. I'm making this up. G, F. And then F. Uh, G again. It's a bit like all along the watchtower, isn't it? So these notes. Now, the first thing I would do is just learn the relationship, you know, that move. It's just like, a, it's like tones down, right? And then the same going back up. Um, I, if it just repeats like that for the whole piece, then I just, all I need to know is are they major or minor? I know, you know, and the, by the way, a quick way of doing that is just doing this. I don't know if you're ever doing this, guys, on the bass. If you play any note on the, uh, on the E string and play the same fret on the G and then kind of claw them like this, that kind of gives you a minor chord, right? And then if you do the next fret up on the G string, that gives you like a really basic major or minor chord. So if I'm working things out and I'm like, is that major or minor? I'll usually, usually use that. But anyway, you know, as long as I know whether the major or minor, so I'm going to tell you it's, it's A minor, G, F, and G, right? Then I'm good to go. I don't really need to think about that too much more. I'm just going to learn that piece like that. Right, just a shape. And even if I have to move it somewhere else, you know, different key, as long as I get that relationship, like let's say we want to do it in C sharp. It's just the same, it's a pattern. You see what I'm saying? I'm not in this, I'm not even thinking numbers. I'm but I'm just not thinking notes. I'm not thinking A, G, F. I'm just thinking that movement. And whether the major or minor, right? I will think more into the theory, into the connection of those. But that's all you really need to know to, to learn it quickly, okay? Um, so that's kind of like recognising, I guess, like a pattern on the fingerboard, like, um, you know, things like... Like green onions, you know. It's a root, a flat three, and a four. But, you know, all you really need to get down is that pattern, and you can play it in any key, you know. You know, so you probably a lot of you might do this already, but that's what I mean about kind of recognizing patterns on the fingerboard. You know, that's that's using the fingerboard to kind of help you uh, navigate the piece. If you get too hung up on it, sometimes, obviously, if you're using a lot of open strings, this came up the other week. Um, it can be harder to, to transpose it, but yeah. But if it needs to be learned quickly, then do anything you can within your power to do it. Um, and then in terms of song structure, right? Let's get um, a piece of music up. What I really wanted to do in this was play pieces of music that were, um, you know, like really recognizable, but we'll just get cut off. You know, the stream will just die. So here we go. I've downloaded some uh, sort of royalty free things. So let's have a listen to this. Right, so I've almost learnt that bit already, right? And what I've done there is, let me play that back to you. And what I'm hearing is, um, we, we've got, um, we had, it sort of stayed on one chord for one, two, three, four, two, two, three, for four bars. And then it shifted down to another chord for four bars, right? So that's kind of all I took in. And I could hear it was, it, it was like moved down about a tone. So check it out. Here we go. And then it moves down. One, two, three, four. I don't know why I'm going like that. And then back. I bet it repeats. I can stop it. Right, so you know, you, you, I bet you can hear that, you know, you knew it was going to do that, right? You know, so, so basically, we've got like nearly 30 seconds into the song and we've kind of got the structure and the way we, i've done that is straight away i'm like 
I hear this groove. I'm going to lock in on the line in a minute. But I was first and foremost, I'm hearing like the cues, the movement. So it's like four bars of something. Then it moves down to another chord and does four bars. And then it moves back up and does four. So this is what I mean by, about the structure, right? If I was to like learn that from tab, like, so the first note is this. And then it goes like that. And, and it, right? How hard is that going to be? So the first thing you do is learn the structure, learn the uh, the pattern, right? Let me just quickly um, have a go, see if I can actually get that bass line. One sec. <laughs> eyes closed, by the way, because I, I actually find if I shut my eyes, I really, really listen to it. I have got ADHD, so I need to shut my eyes to stop the distractions. But anyway... <laughs> Now, I don't know if you can hear that, guys. Listen. All right. Right. I don't know what key it's in. So I'll sing. So that's a C. And then it moved down. Does it do the same? I don't. Yeah. I think. I think that's actually supposed to be. <laughs> so it's going a bit lower than I've got the range on the bass, right? One sec. But what I'm saying is, the first thing I went for wasn't what notes it was. It was what the pattern was, what, you know, where the song, what the road map, map of the tune was there. And then you, you know, you learn the line. It's like a repeated thing. And, you know, hopefully you can see how that is, you know, the, the process. I've not really gone into, you know, how to work the, the notes out too much there. But that's what I mean about looking for patterns, right? So hopefully that makes some kind of sense. Um, just really quickly, uh, just go a little more into this tune. Let's see if, there's, let's see if that bit, let's see how long it does it for. And let's see if it repeats, okay? So from the top, get rid of that Skypey thing. Here we go. And then it's going back up to the C, four of these. Okay, so what happened there is, I don't know if you would, if you could hear the bass, because I don't know what you're listening on, obviously, but that bass line that was going on over that kind of intro thing, by the way, how flipping cheesy is this piece of music? <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, you know, the bass line continued, you know, so the cool thing is, in working that first bit out there, we're actually, we've actually worked out, um, it looks like, like most of the verse and all the rest of it. So I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Any more questions, Jan? Uh, well, actually, we've just got a couple of comments. Uh, Sean P. Bear says, thanks for the signed CD and signed vinyl. Um, Mark Richardson, this is interesting. Does it help to get the root notes in your head, then embellish them? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> Lee Waterton. Oh, sorry, I'm laughing at something else, Lee. Sorry, not that. Uh, I've been teaching myself the bass line from Cars by Gary Newman, and the cool. whole pattern thing helped immensely. Right, yeah, and that's a great example, by the way of a tune where you got to play that bass line, in my opinion. You know, if you're going to play Cars, um, you've got to play that bass part because it's almost like the lead thing, you know, -da -da -da, -ba -da -da -da, you know, um, and even if you can't sing it well, like I just didn't, um, you know, learning it like that, like a piece is great. And then like Lee says, you know, there's nothing wrong with just seeing the pattern on the board, um, you know, and it depends, like, like I say, a lot of the, if I need to learn something fast, I'll rely much more on patterns. If I've got more time, I'll kind of try and understand it, the, the kind of harmony behind it a little bit more. And then that gives me the freedom when I'm playing it live to mess around with it a bit more without worrying too much, you know. Uh, any more questions, Jan? Uh, 
This is what actually made me laugh. Okay. <laughs> Anthony Greatbank said there were no tabs around when he started to learn bass and guitar. It was all done by ear. Yeah. He slowed his turntable down to learn the songs. I bet that was interesting with the vocals. <laughs> yeah, but that's what we did, Jan, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you mean we did? <laughs> me and Anthony, you know, sat by the campfire back in the day <laughs> working out tunes. You know, we've got a long history. I, I must have been a, a nip at that point. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan said, if you can hum it, you can play it. You see, that's exactly right. So, like, um, so you know, think of it this way, right? And um, By the way, I totally understand that bass is very hard. If you've not done it, if you're not experienced in doing it, it's very hard to really tune into for a lot of people. Um, but a lot of it is what they don't realize. It really is, like, full-range speakers. These are great, like, in-ears... Um, you know, because and or headphones, because you also got that stereo separation, so everything kind of moves out of the way, and you can hear the bass in the middle, stuff like that, right? Um, any more questions, Jan? Uh, no, well, actually, from me. Okay. Uh, when I learn lyrics, yeah. I, I feel I, I go over them and over them, over them, yeah, and I think I know them, and then I, I go, right, this is the time, and I do it, get it wrong, and that, go to bed get up in the morning it's like it's digested right yeah and, yeah. It, and i can remember it more yes yeah it, does that is that the same with you yeah 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 it is you know um sometimes and and then other times it's gone <laughs> it's gone <laughs> so we're gonna get to that in a minute right any more questions before i move on no you can move on <laughs> hope you're enjoying this guys i've got a lot of stuff to get through here so uh let me see right um, then the next thing, I'm going to actually do the practical in a minute this is what i've decided to do is, is get through this, this next part pretty quickly and then I'm going to do it real for real. Uh, real for real? I'm going to do it for real in real time. And then we'll take questions along the way. And hopefully it'll sort of open it all up to you a little bit more. Okay. Part three is making it stick. This is the, th the third kind of subheading I've got here. So, and it's, you know, what Jan was talking about there is how do you make it stick? So you've, you've worked it all out, right? And, you know, what you don't want to happen is that, that you kind of put the bass down, you pick it up tomorrow, or worse still, you get on a gig or a live stream or something, and it just goes, right? So how do you make it stick? For me, right, bearing in mind that I'd never write anything out, I never do that, I never, even tab, I don't use anything like that. I just make sure I remember it. But what I do do is make little crib sheets, right? So let's say um, you're working out a song... Um, I'm trying to think of an exit. I'll, 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 let me think now. That What could I think of that? Du, 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 du. Right, okay, you know that what, that tune there? I think that was the bass line, right? Du, 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 du. Right, if I've kind of just worked that out the night before or on the morning of the gig or something like that, right, the chances are I'm going <laughs> to walk on stage, look at the set list and go, what the hell's that? You know, just look at the name of the th song and have no idea how it even starts. But what I know is, as soon as I hear it, I'll be like, oh, that one, yeah, yeah, da, 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 right. So what I do, this just completely off the top of my head, because I've never honestly played that tune or heard it before, Um, I would probably write uh, Sunshine of Your Love, right? Da, 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 bum, 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 you know, like... Now, I don't... Obviously, I'm not going to play all that, but as long as I've got... You know, and somebody counts it off. One, two, three, four. Da, 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 you know, it's enough just to kind of kickstart me into the tune. Um, and I'd write the, the, the starting notes as well. I'd, I'd probably write a Sunshine of Your Love C. You know, and I'd put a disco feel. And um, and another note I might make is, you, you know, some of you might put, uh, it, it plays the riff of, it plays the riff over C and then over B flat, you know. Um, for me, I might think it's like it's it's the root, and then it goes down a tone. You know, whatever works. But that's all I will write down. It's raining, by the way. If it sounds like snap, crackle, and pop when I talk, <laughs> you know. So, so I'm not writing like loads of stuff. I've just got I look down at my thing. I've got the title of the song, maybe a rough speed, and I've got sunshine of your love, C, and then maybe slash B flat. You know, so I know I've got the first moves in just to get me going, all right? And I'm, if, you know, if I've not had a lot of time to prepare, I might need to make similar notes, you know, for like the verse and the chorus or whatever, okay? Uh, another great idea you can do um, for, for like learning phrases and stuff, you know, um, 
is to to use like lyric um, lyrics for spoken word, right? So, for example, um, I remember when I was young and uh, we were learning Poison Ivy. Do you know that tune? Um, uh, and we came up with an ending, which was like this. That was when I was 16. I can't believe I can still remember it. And that ba 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 da ba 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 right? I mean, we were like young, inexperienced musicians, and it was like, how do we remember where that, that stab comes, you know? Uh, and the guy that was kind of like helping us out, mentoring the band, he's like, uh, has your dad come back, right? Came up with this phrase, has your dad come back, right? And that's how we remembered it, right? Has your dad come back, right? And it's a really valid thing. It's just a great thing. So again, ending, you like you put you in the middle of a song, you think the ending's coming. Oh my God, like, wh- what's that phrase, you know? And then you look down and it says, has your dad come back, right? So again, these are like little kind of shorthand things you can do uh, that I find much better than like scoring the whole thing out. All right? Uh, and also, you, I've, I've said about using similar well-known sheets. Um, and then the other thing is just repetition 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 so just play the thing uh and then play it again and then play it again and then go and have a cup of tea and then play it again 10 times just play it until you can't forget it all right any more questions jam uh arpit gershom is uh, saying i'm not entirely sure what he's asking this is what practice to do for chords changing notes um so so right okay now the thing is um let, let me just quickly say this, actually, um, you know, because there's, there's like a bunch of stuff. Obviously, we, we, you know, I can't cover everything in this uh, in this lesson, but there's um, a, a link in the description below that you can check out after this lesson where I actually um, actually in depth go through like, you know, practically working out a song so you can see what I do. Um, just quickly on that, um, like I say, it, it's probably like too much to get through in this lesson, but you know, you can use like the arpeggio of the chords, you know, so if it's a, a C, C major, you know, one, three, five, um, an octave maybe. Or if it's minor, you can use one, flat three, you know, so you can basically, you know, you can play a chord sequence and add those notes in. But like I said, that's kind of probably uh, too much to get into in this lesson, unfortunately, but I will do in another lesson, in like an improvisation lesson. Let me... Go on, Jam. Just, just another app. Uh, Paul Taylor's saying Chord AI is a great app on Android for analysing songs and reasonably accurately writes the chords on a timeline. Cool. So that's another one to sort of help, isn't it? It is. It is. But, um, and yeah, great, right? Uh, but like I say, from my point of view, just, just being honest, what I always try to do is, as much as I can, use me is, let me tell you this, right? If, uh, let me tell you this, if I'm, say, at a jam night and uh, somebody gets up and they want to do a song um, and I'll be like, how, how does that go, right? Just play it to me. I'll ask them to play it to me. And sometimes they go like, yeah, it's uh, it's C. It, and I'm like, please don't tell me the chord. Just play it. Because the way I work, right, I, I'm trying to like, memorize all those, like, you know, letters and stuff, right? I would want to hear the sound. And then I'm like, uh... Oh, it's going to a five, you know, and I try and learn things that way as much as I can, only because I've done it uh, a long time. So I do encourage everybody to try as much as they can to kind of work things out. I'm going to show you how that works right now. Let's do it. Let's work a song out together. What do you think, Jan? What? <laughs> what, what, what do I think? What, what live stream are you in? <laughs> I was, you were supposed to be really enthusiastic and say, yeah, let's work a song out. That sounds fantastic. I was reading Lee's co- uh, comment. He says, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say Scott's T-shirt is awesome. Uh-huh. I have one and my handsomeness went up by 500%. Absolutely. These T-shirts are available as well. You well, know. he's actually said on here, for those of you wanting more handsomeness, you can buy them at Scott's website. I need it all the help exactly. I can get. Exactly. All right, here's the tune I'm going to have a look at. Like I say, I can't use a recognisable tune. I thought it would have been really cool for, for you, you know, folks at home to throw ideas my way. We just have the stream cut off copyright. So this is one I picked at random. I just kind of literally just listened to, you know, a, a bit of it just to see if it was suitable. I think it is. It's a punk-style tune, 
and it's called Sin City, and I've no idea who it's by. It's a royal, royalty-free thing. It, um, links in the description below. <laughs> So the first thing um, I, 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 I'm going to do is um, I would normally listen to the whole tune a few times, right? We, we probably really haven't got time to that, so I'm going to literally do it section by section. So let me do that again, and let me tell you what I'm what I'm hearing. Just tr do the same, you know, have a real listen to this. Imagine you're about to work it out. Let's have a go. Right, so we have this kind of guitar intro uh, where we don't play anything, which is brilliant, right? But it's important to to kind of clock how many times it did it. Any guesses? Two bars. Two bars. Comes or, in on the third. Well, funny enough, this is talking about seeing patterns. Yeah. You might be right. Um, I need to go because I was talking. I forgot. <laughs> but um, I'm hearing it as it's more like eight bars. Is it? I, I don't, don't know. know. Well, I don't know. Me. This is the thing, right? With something like that, I won't count it as bars. I'll count it as number of times he plays that riff or she plays that riff. Check it out. And then we're in. So that's so that's that bit learned, right? You know, two riffs and we're in. That's our cue, our signpost. Okay, I'm just going to load this song into a different program. You know, the one called Transcribe that I was talking about. And here I am using Windows Media Player. So, sneaky thing, I'm pretty sure that when i heard the drums kick in i think the bass riff carried on but let's have, let's bring that up i apologize for this slight delay while i find the beggar here we go so i'm going to put this up on the screen this is transcribed by the way and it's like if you've not worked with anything like this before um this is you know the the waveform it's like a visual representation of the song and this bit here is that intro. Check it out. You'll, you'll see like a line play through. So we come in there, right? Okay. Now, let's have a listen. I'm going to go back a little bit, and now I'm going to really listen to what happens next. Let's all do the same. And then it changed. Now, the reason I kept it going there is if something had have changed in that bass part, I would have stopped it ages ago, right? But because it seemed to carry on, I'm like going, right, let's see how far we can push it. Let's see how long that bass line stays the same, right? Now, I'd be interested to know, before I go any further, if, if you're watching live now, which is a strange question to ask, if you could um, just tell me if you think you could hear what the bass was doing there. All right, let's see if we get any responses. Any responses? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Jan, actually. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of doing what that guitar riff was doing. You know, talking about singing it, right? Just, I'm going to crack on, but, do you know, be honest. Drop, drop a line, you know, in, in the comments if you could kind of hear what that bass was doing. Right, here we go again. Check it out. It's just, uh, da, 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 da. and this is where it comes in. If you can hear that, if you can hear that, I haven't touched the bass yet at all, right? I'm learning the song, but I haven't t touched the bass at all yet. And this is honestly the, the, the best way to approach this. Um, so I'm now pretty confident that I've got the bass line. I've learned it, you know, and you have to, if you can sing it, man. and if you can't, let's do it together. All right, let's actually do that thing. Here we go. Check it out. One, 
It's so, a hard baseline, that, isn't it? It's not. It's not, is it? It's very. <laughs> it's a very cool baseline. But the thing is about it, guys. Right. Um, you know, this is a piece where, like, if you got the tab, if you approached it from that point of view, you might be like, right. So it starts on zero. This is not at all in a condescending way. I'm, I literally mean this is what you would do. That's what I would do. You know, be like, right. So hang on. So we've got like fret, fret zero, and I don't know what key it's in yet. And then you 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 working out and you've got so how many times does it do that so it's like do you see where i'm going with this right if you learn it like a tune you know it and now all you got to do is kind of find that on the bass and play it so which i'm going to do now let's play that again <laughs> so i'm going to try and find that note and if i have no idea what note that is by the way I'll check it again <laughs> Because I've been talking, you lose the note. You to keep playing it. Da da da. Da 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 da. Right, I'm hearing that as a G, I think. So what I'll do is play that G. Did you see what happened there? Let me do that one more time. Da 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 da. Ish, my singing went off. All right. Now check it out, right? Just through experience, it goes like root, root, flat, third, ra, da, 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 da. you know, it's talking about thinking of not notes, but mo but patterns, movements. So that's going. Or, you know, probably with a pick, punky. Probably through like an SVT kind of sound. Optional. So let's have a go. I'm going to have a go at playing that song up to eight changes. Did we get any responses there, John? Yeah, we've got quite a few actually. Cool. Um, regarding, uh, let's have a look. Regarde. Victor Victor's here. How Hi, you doing, Victor. Victor. Uh, four bars, perfect fifth on guitar intro. That was obviously coming in. Uh, Lee not, uh, noticed it was yeah, sliding. Yeah, power chords, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was sliding up and down the neck. Yes, yes. Uh, and as with regards to the notes, uh, Greg says, Greg's here. Hi, Greg. All right, Greggles. Uh, G to B flat. Uh, nice. Cool, cool like says, sounds like smoke on the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, root notes. More on that in a minute. Uh, yeah, root notes keep coming up. Uh, Paul Taylor says, obviously, it follows the riff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, heavily influenced by the kinks. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, Mark Richardson, root notes would do it. He mentioned the root notes before. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and they're, they're just sort of saying, like, Mark Richardson had B-flat, Sean PSG, yeah. so they kind of just, you know. Excellent, yeah, yeah, that's it. And this is the thing, right? You know, you could um, you could learn that in the car or something like that, and then you pick the bass and pretty much just play it, right, if you learn it that way. And not only that, right, let's have a go. Here we go. Hang on, I'm way too quiet here. Just one sec, guys. That Skype's been a... Uh, uh... <laughs> Hang on. What noise was that, Jan? What are you doing there? Sorry, I was moving my microphone thing. <laughs> Didn't know you could hear that. Okay. Yeah, it's very, it's very loud. Oh, dear. Try that again. Like you say, maybe slide it. Right, okay. So that's it nailed. Now, talking about signposts in, in, in the music, right? All you literally need to be thinking about there is, is you know, that you just do that kind of for ages uh, and then it changes. And the way that I would probably nail that quickly, if it, like I don't know this song at all, as none of us do, I assume, <clears throat> <clears throat> is I'll probably see what the vocals do. Let's have a look. See if there's a cue. Let's see. All right. Here we go. Let me take it back a little bit. Uh, let me. I need to go back. There wasn't much to go on there, right? So I'm going to go back a bit further. Bad riding, cover the walls. Guess I'm lucky if I live. 
So I'd probably learn that lyric. Was it like laughed a fall, something like that? Do you let me uh, attempt to sing it? <laughs> laughed a fall, something like that. Check it out. Lift, lift to fall, I think. But whatever, you know, it doesn't really matter at this point. Lift to fall, right? So I'm listening for that. So I'm just kind of. So now all I need to do is not come in while the the, the riff plays twice at the beginning. And then just pl- keep doing this until I hear let let to the fall. Let's try it. You might sing it earlier, right? Let's give it a go. Uh, but what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna actually go back right now. We'll do it in a minute. I may as well because we're here. And by the way, this is what you can do in this program. That's where we stopped. So around here is where that new bit starts. So I'm, all I do is click back here somewhere. And I just kind of eyeball where that line is when the new bit starts. And it was about here, right? So I'll check it out. Okay, so what you had there, um, again, let me know if, you, if you're hearing the same thing. I'm hearing... Let me see, you can see me. I'm hearing two of almost the same thing, right? Like it's like this thing that happens twice. Uh, the second time it changes a bit. Listen again. Here we go. I'll take it back so we've got a lead in and we can hear that. Down, down, far, whatever. <gasps> back further. Yeah, I need to go back further even still. Sorry, guys. So it's kind of got that like Gin Ginny kind of rhythm. If I left to fall, Sin, City. Sin City, Sin City. But it, you know, it's like that. Well, mm-hmm. that'll do. Sin City. You know, that's that's giving you the rhythm part of it, right? I don't know the notes yet. If I left to fall, Sin City. All right, so Sin City. If I left to fall, Sin City. It's almost like the dun dun dun. dun is that right? Dun dun dun. It's got up to a a, a minor six or a, an E flat. Dun dun. Uh, but again, let's learn the tune. Let's learn what it you know to sing it. Check it out. If I left to fall, Sin City. All right, so it's like the same twice. It's like da 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 and something something different. I think it does does die. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to turn this down. Okay, da 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 da. Da, 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 da. Now that's what I'm hearing as a bass line. Let's sing it together. And then it's almost the same, but a different. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, but a different <laughs> note. So can you see how we're kind of recognizing the patterns here, right? And hopefully. Hopefully this is inspiring you in some way that if you learn songs like this first, then even if you get the tab, all you need to do is is you know what the rhythm, the, the feel is, and all the rest of it. You just need to kind of pull it out of the tab and, uh, and apply it to that, right? So I'm going to have a go at that. So da 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 Da, 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 I think. Uh, no, I think it's lower. Da, ah. Is it that? Da, 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 da. Yeah, right, I'm gonna. It's so it's like. Ah. Da, 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 da. No, right. da, 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 da. I'm is sure it, it is does. It? I'm it, sure it does that. Okay, okay. Let's have a listen. Da, da, 
it's a five. No, it's a flat seven. It's an F. All right. Oh, sorry, I'm listening to vocals. <laughs> <laughs> you can bugger off, you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're on bass. Well, yeah. this, this is a bass workshop, Janet. Come on. I'll be quiet. All right. So how are we doing for time? What time is it? Wow. Um, so let's we're gonna round this up soon. Like like let's just um let's just go with that one more time. I'm gonna try and play along with it this time. Anyway. And then we're into something different, right? Okay, so we've probably done enough. You get get the idea. We're running out of time. So we're now at like 41... Sorry, is that right? 41 seconds? No, no, no. We're much further than that. Where are we at? Where are we at here? Let's have a look. I think that's two... It's not telling me the damn time. Hang on. Yeah, so we're like going on to close to a minute into the tune. Um... And we've kind of got it up to that point, right? So let me just try and play it, and then let me talk through and see if there's any more questions. So back to the beginning. Let's give it a go. I'm going to turn the track down so you can hear what I'm doing. Hang on. I'll do. Here we go. somewhere else so you see you know that's that's how I've, that's how i learn songs that's how you know a lot of um people who work it by ear learn songs um you know a lot of cues a lot of signposts in the music etc as it happens you know i forgot all about that um listening for the vocal thing you know listening for that i can't even remember the words now because when i played it it just kind of like it felt like a natural point where it was going to change so any questions so far jan or uh no it, it people are obviously just um, you know, sort of not guessing, but um, you know, sort of saying what they thought on the notes front. Cool. Okay. Um, Luke Jones says that bass looks like a bass. <laughs> <laughs> That's proper bass, this one. <laughs> so I think I've kind of covered uh, pretty much everything I was going to cover. You know, in an hour, you can only kind of go so far with this, and I will, you know, do on my regular videos. I will go into more, and maybe in these live streams, you know, I'll, I'll kind of break these down into smaller components. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that's how it works. So let's just kind of recap. If I was doing that tune uh, tomorrow on a gig, I'd want to be writing down um, what the key is, or the starting note at least. I'd probably just write G, right? Um, I would, uh, for me, I'd probably write like one flat three for the riff, that's the way I do it. You might write G and B flat, but I encourage you to get into this kind of uh, notes, uh, sorry, intervals way of thinking. Now, Greg said that. Greg said one to flat third. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. it, you know. Um, and, you know, the more you think about that, and just really quickly, somebody said smoke on the water, whatever. Um, there are a lot, I'm going to do a video on this, actually, how many songs use similar chord sequences, you know, but that kind of, like one flat three, you know, that move, you know, um, you know, there's like hundreds of them that do that thing, that root flat three thing, right? If you learn it that way, does that mean that if the, there's a key change, it's just the same one flat third? It, it's so exactly whatever that. happens, whatever key you're in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's exactly that. And even more, you know, um, on top of that, is the next time you hear another song that do, does that, that, bah, bah, yeah, all oh, right, okay, it's root flat three. You know, it helps you work things out. So uh, I'm going to kind of wrap it up there. Um, any questions from anybody before we go? Any comments, any suggestions anyone would like to throw in? Um, I'll just kind of hang around for a minute and drink the rest of this bottle of water. 
Uh, no, I think we're all up to date. Um, just but, evening to Derek Wainford. Ah, Kayvon says, does muscle memory play a big part in getting used to play the bass parts you're learning? Yeah, it does. You know, um, muscle memory is super, super important. Um, I wouldn't rely on it alone. I kind of, um, as I learn tunes, I sort of recommend simultaneously working the mechanics of it out. Uh, one great thing you can do is sing it as you play it. That's a really, really great idea. That's kind of doing the reverse of like working songs out. If you already know a bass line, like sing along as you play it. Um, and yeah, um, and, and also kind of, you know, if, if you want to go that extra distance, like learn the, the, the harmony, you know, learn why those notes are what they are and, and, and stuff. Uh, and that helps if you want to get into improvising and stuff on the spot. Any more, Janet, or is that us up to date? Uh, uh, that's it, I think. Frank Edwards says, great workshop, loved it. More, please. Lee, uh, been a blast. Can't wait for my amp to come through. <laughs> then I can get yes. an asbo with all these tips. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It was um, it was a difficult topic to to kind of cover in in just an hour. So uh, so do I tell you what? In your com in the comments and after the videos finished, if you don't mind dropping a comment either on Facebook or on YouTube of aspects of this that you'd like me to look more into. And we could do like another workshop, like kind of, you know, put in a spyglass on that particular element. Thanks very much indeed. Goodbye from Jane Jan. Goodbye, everybody. And goodbye from me and see you in the next video. Thanks very much. See you later. Bye.